I think uh, if I look just in the United States at, at, let's say, high school age, 15 to 18 years old, I think you can change the outcome of a vast majority of the games with what you do on the basis. A lot of it, okay? Um, I think a lot of the things that we've taught in the past have been um, very technical in nature, and I don't think we have to be that technical in nature. I think the body understands what we're trying to do, all right? Uh, you know, back in the day we used to play a game called base runner. Pretty easy. I understood it. You understood it. You try to stay in the middle and your body re reacts and you gain instinct. So I think the first thing we try to do is we try to teach through mistakes, all right? We don't try to do a lot of, I don't try to tell them exactly what they need to do to get a lead off, a primary lead. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to really talk about it you know, how we do that. Um, but I'm going to talk about some basics. But before I do, let's talk about some things. My mentality is runs win games, not hits. Runs win games. All right? Specifically, we want to, we want to try to score runs with less than two hits in, a game, in, in an inning. All right? So I'm a big believer of, of getting on, getting them over, and if I, if I, if I cho had a choice, I like to steal in the second and bunt in the third. Or steal in the second, steal in the third. All right? There's a number of other things we're trying to do. Um, we're trying to create some fast catch, right? We want three guys touching the ball. We want to put some pressure on everyone that's involved on the opposite side. Uh, we're trying to uh, create some thought, some negative thought in the pitcher's mind. All right, so, so why are we got to be great at base running? Why do we got to be so uh, uh, aggressive? Well, we got to be aggressive because I know this. I know that the more aggressive we are, the more uncomfortable a pitcher is. That's the bottom line. So even if we can't steal a base, if the intent to steal a base is there, now all of a sudden he knows about it, he has to control it, and what do we hope for? We hope he compromises the pitch. Okay, so when it's all said and done, that's really what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to um, have some aggressive thoughts. Um, acronym, I ta told you before, um, I don't have a great memory, so I need, I need something to remind me of something else. So, um, Bozo, B-O-S-O, Bozo. All right, don't be a Bozo. Don't be a Bozo on the basis, don't be a clown. All right, what's Bozo stand for? Where's the ball? How many outs? Okay, what's the situation and where's the opportunity? Something that I'm a big believer of, when I, my base runner gets to first, I don't, I don't talk to him or yell at him. My expectation is that he looks at me and tells me how many outs. He's gonna initiate the communication with me. I'm not gonna say, hey, Liam, Liam, two down, Liam. Because you know what you're doing when you're always saying, two, hey, you got one down. What are you doing? They're not listening to you. They're just, they're just, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. Then, then why the next one you're, you're, you're not running when it's a line drive? So by making them initiate contact and communication, what you've done is you've put it through their mind. They've had to think about it. So they get to first, they think about being a bozo. Where's the ball? How many outs? What's the situation? Where's the opportunity? Coach, I got one. Then I give my signs. All right. Action plan. What are we trying to do? We're trying to get free bases. Free bases. What's a free base? It's a stolen base. It's a free base. The biggest undertaught thing in all of sports is balls in the dirt. Look, guys, if you could teach your guys to get a good secondary lead and move on contact with the ground, they're going to be safe 90% of the time at your level. Probably not at the pro level, 75% at my level, all right? But what has to happen? The guy has to fall to his knees, he has to block it, he has to get up, he has to throw the guy out. If they're instinctual and they're able to read a ball in the dirt and they're able to move, huge, huge. Um, I don't know where I got this stat, but I think it's still accurate today. Um, the odds are 27 to 1 that you'll get three hits in one inning. <coughs> and I think, that's, I think that's still applicable today. Okay? Um, 
So we're, we're all about wreaking havoc. All right, my guys are on the, are their own most of the time. In the fall, when we start our season, I'm cutting them loose. Biggest mistake, guys, first game of the season, try to win the game and be conservative. Cut the guys loose. Cut them loose. The only way you'll know how good they are on the bases is if you let them run. Let them move. Okay? They might get thrown out. We make an adjustment, we try it again. By the end of the year, you're going to have some good thoughts about where we need to be. All right? The only way you get better is to, to, to reach, get out of your comfort zone, and take some chances. All right? There's a couple things I, I want to do as, as a, a team. All right? I want, I want to score first. I really do. I don't think it's all bad when we go on the road. I think uh, there's a lot of pressure on the home team. They got to go out, they got to throw and catch, they got to be, the pitcher better be sharp, all right? I love going on the road, I love hitting first, I love scoring first. You score first, game has changed. So our goal is to score, score first. Second of all, if we don't score first, we want to keep it close, all right? Here's, here's a uh, textbook. I think all of America, sure all the world. When you get down by a lot, there's no need to run, right? Because one run's not going to help you. I don't buy that. We run or don't run based on our chances of success. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Matter of fact, when you're down five, I think your chances increase all things equal. How do we get it? We need one before we can get two. Now, I'm not telling you just run for no, no reason. I still believe in playing it for the beginning. But look, it doesn't matter to me if, if, if I got Steve Springer at first base and he's a great runner and the chances of he's stolen X number of bases. I know, his, I know his steal percentage, right? And I know what the stopwatch says and I know what the catcher says. What do I care that he's down, we're down five? I don't care, right? I run or not, I choose not to run based on the numbers of success. What are the numbers? Catch a pop time, pitcher to the plate, base run. Who is he? All right. Um, I think a lot of guys have talked about this, but it's important to study the pitchers. Every pitcher has a tendency. We have a pitcher, for example, that he'll only pick early. But anyway, he'll never set and hold. Which, by the way, if, if I was talking to pitchers, if you don't have a great pick move, at least what you got to do is you got to set and hold. You got to hold. You got to hold. If you hold and still can execute a pitch, that's worse than always being in the rhythm and on time. Because if you hold, the base runner has to stop his feet and he has to be patient for the right time. And that's difficult. Because what is a good base runner doing? He's anticipating the timing of the pitcher and he understands their tendencies. Right? So you got to study. It's a study game. What's he do? How's he pick? So I got this guy. All he do every time he gets to the top, pick. So I'm like, Austin, just hold. Just, just hold the ball in wait. Pick. No, no, no. Just hold the ball in wait. Pick. Can't do it. In a game, he can't do it. So we got to practice really hard because I think that's important. So study the pitchers. They all have tendencies. Know what they're throwing. What pitch they throw is important. I'm a big believer in picking signs, not only at the corners, but when I'm on the, on the bases. If you're at first base and you're a base runner, there's usually one sign given at most levels. Right? And what is this in 95% in of the countries in the world? Okay? So if you know that, any other thing is what? Off-speed pitches. Right there, if we know that, game has changed. If we know the curveball, scary man has really changed, right? So a base on a combination of the situation, the pitcher that we're, we're facing, in my own personal knowledge of me and my team, we can decide what we're going to do, all right? So there's four things I want to cover with you. I want to talk about primary leads, secondary leads, dirt ball reads, and contact reads. Because when it's all said and done, all this other stuff, you know, right, left, one, one, two, three, that's 
that's all shit. It's all shit. Get off the base. Just if you're a kid and you're playing a game, it's called don't get picked off game. They'll go like this. And that's just as good as the mechanical thing we just developed. All right. So as far as a primary lead, all right, I want to just go over a couple concepts. I believe in a one-way lead. What's a one-way lead? We're going to take a big lead, probably 12 feet or so. All right. We're in this position here. All right. And my intention is I'm going to be late to go this way, and I'm going to be early to go back. So in a one-way lead, my job is to get his pick book. So I'm going to take a average to big lead, all right, and my first tendency is to lean and read. All right, I'm not going there. I'm blocking that out. I'm not doing that. I'm going to take a big lead, and I'm going to lean and read, and if I have to come back, I'm back. Now, the better the team, the more they know what you're trying to do, and they understand that. But if we can get a pick, if we can get a guy on base in the first inning and get pickoffs in the first inning, then we can see what we have. You know, if a left-hander doesn't pick, it's because he has a shitty pick move. Right? 99% of the world, you know what they run on on the lefty, don't you? First movement. They go right away. So <coughs> you're telling me a pitcher can't just, right now, can't just look? What do you want to do? I'll go here, here, where are you going to go? If you can teach your pitchers, left-handed pitchers, to simply do that, first six inches of the foot lift, if he can control his body, running game for a left-hander stops. Over. Done. Because what's everyone doing? As soon as you pick up, take off and go. And you know what? It, it works quite a bit. All right? Any two-way two -way lead I give you. Two-way lead, once again, we're set up. We're going to be in an athletic position. I'm not a big believer of getting low because I think that's a non-athletic position. I think you've got to get up. Every, some guys will sit higher. Some guys will hit sit a little lower, okay? But for as far as I'm concerned, I want to be off the base. I want to be in a lead. I have three types of lead. I have an average lead, all right? I have a safe lead and I have a plus lead. That's it. Safe lead is, look, man, you're a shitty base runner. The guy's a good pick guy. Just, we're crushing the ball. Just don't be stupid. Normal lead. Normal lead is where we're at most of the time. We're comfortable. We're not going to get picked off, and then there's a plus lead. All right. More important than the size of the lead is that our ultimate goal is to get movement before action. Everything we do, right? Movement before action. What do I mean by that? Movement. If I can do this before I actually have to run, that's going to help me. If I can have some flow, that's going to help me. Right? If I can do this before I steal, that's really going to help me. If I can do this before I steal, Movement before action, that's going to help me, okay? What I don't want to be is dead stop right here, all right? So my goal is to get movement before action, all right? So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, if we're trying to teach steel mechanics specifically, all right, um, there's, there's, there's what we call a jump lead, all right? And I want to talk a little bit about it because um, I think it's a really tough, tough thing to understand. But if you just have your guys do this a little bit, all right, if they just do this, the amount of time it takes them to put their feet down is short. I couldn't believe it when I started asking them to do that. I said, look, just move your feet, move your feet out a little bit. If they just do this at the right time, one of two things is going to happen, all right? If the pitcher pick, picks on the jump, your bait's here, you go back. If the pitcher goes home, you flow into your secondary lead. What if you created movement before action, which we can continue that. That means we can go first to third, all right, or we can go second home, all right? So as far as I'm concerned, you're like, what do you mean a jump lead? A jump lead, you're here, and you're just moving your feet, and until he stops my feet, until he shuts me down, I'm always going to create some movement before action, right? So here he is. He's going up to his move. As he's approaching his pick, I'm going to just try to time it so that I'm taking a small hop as he either has to decide to go or pick. So only two things he can do. He can go here or he can go here. Every pitcher has timing. 
How do we how do we check time it on the way out? H A W K Hawk H A H A H A H A W K. What are we doing? We just want his timing. That's all we want. We want his timing. It's not cheating, it's anticipation. Pitchers want comfort and rhythm. Right? That's what they want. They want rhythm. They want to be able to throw when they're ready to throw. <coughs> right? So what is our job? Our job is to jump when they have to make the decision. So here he is. He's set. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small lead here. I'm either going to either flow into a, a steal or a secondary lead, or I'm going to go back when he picks me. What's our goal? It's to create moment before action. Lean lead. Lean lead. I'm not going to jump, but I'm going to do this, though. So. If I can get on the right timing, here's going to pick, I might have to get back. If he doesn't pick, I can steal or I can, or I can get my, into my secondary lead. How do we do it? How do you teach it? You got to have him do it. You got to have him try it. You got to ask him, get as far off as you can and let, let's see the game. Let's play the game. All right? <clears throat> There's a guy in the States. Um, was most recently working with the Cubs who teaches this kind of stuff. Last name is Roberts. And his son was a real good base runner. What you learn is there's, there's the reason he's a good base runner is not because someone told him, hey, come over here. Let me show you how to take this first lead. One, two, one, two, three. He's a good base runner because he has instincts. <coughs> Give them the confines. Take a lead. Get off. Get off. Your job is to steal. All right. Now, do you have to go over? Hey, a pitcher when he pauses, he has to do one of two things: pick or throw. As long as he's still moving, right? He has options. So, once again, you got to teach him some things. But your job is to get him in a drill and try to work it out. All right. So that's a jump lead. Once again, if we're looking at a secondary lead. Um, or a lean lead, we could just, all we're basically doing is we're just moving into the lean and run. You see a lot of guys steal bases on that. You see a lot of guys doing this. Boom. Now, is there a way I can write down these three things you have to do and you'll be good at? No. But I can tell you, I got drug into this a little bit. I was like, how do I possibly teach this? How do I get my guys to do it? You know how you do it? Put them on the base, you say, hey, here's the game. You try to pick him off or throw him home. Catcher, let's just do it for real. Catcher's there, pitcher's there, guys at first base. We have some criteria, right? Otherwise, what's the pitcher going to do? The pitcher's going to throw over 12 times. So we might set up a scenario where here you go, you got, you got three picks max. Three picks max, <coughs> all right? And you have to throw a strike at near your speed, game speed velocity. So I'll be there with a gun. I know the guy throws 88. He's got to be 86 plus. Otherwise, that tells me he's just laying it in there. All right? He's got three picks. If he picks twice, what's he have to do on the last one? Go home. What are you going to do there? Get a huge lead. Right? I think stealing from second to third is many times easier than stealing first to second, okay? Because a lot of it is, has to do with the control that they have as far as pickoffs, but I think there's a lot going on there. I think, once again, it's a movement. So our guys are typically going to move into the, into the play a little bit, all right? But what are they trying to do? They're trying to expand and get some movement before action, all right? Any questions on that stuff so far? Dirt ball reads. I told you already. I believe if you if you try this, and I think you should, you tell the pitcher, throw the ball in the dirt. Now here's another, here's another drill. Pitcher, I'm going to call the signs to the catcher. There's going to be two options. You're going to throw a fastball up in the zone, or you're going to throw a ball in the dirt. Catcher knows it. Catcher knows it's going to be either a fastball or a ball in the dirt. Usually for us, we I have him throw a breaking ball. 
because it recreates what I, I believe to be a, a real scenario, right? What are you going to bury with two strikes? Right? How many, how many fastballs are swung and missed when they hit at 42 feet? Not many. But all of a sudden, this curveball's throwing up five, eight, eight feet short, and our guys are swinging. So what's going to be in the dirt more of the time? Curveball. So if you can have your pitcher bury a curveball, that's the drill. Fastball one, when I give you a curveball, I need you to throw it in the dirt. What's the catch you got to do? Block it. Base runner doesn't know what's coming, right? But he knows there's a chance of it going in the dirt. So when he, when he, when he sees a ball going in the dirt, he releases and goes. You're going to find out that you're going to have the vast majority of your guys safe at second. Now, I'm talking about all things equal, right? Chris is a little slower than IG, maybe. You know them, right? That doesn't mean, you know, the overweight kid who runs slow but hits bombs, that he's the guy who's always safe. But what are we learning? We're learning what we can do when. So worst case scenario, this is what should happen. You read the ball down in the dirt, all right? You're already extending your lead. You're ready to roll. He goes down on his knees. You take off two steps. He blocks. He comes up. I come back. What I, what I need to see is I need to see an extension of my lead because I'm anticipating a ball in the dirt. So once again, I believe if you just know how to do a jump, lean, jump in a lean lead at, or a lean lead at first, and you're aggressive, and you understand how to read a ball in the dirt and are aggressive, I think you've just changed the outcome of the game. All right? The biggest and most impressive base running I've ever seen deals with reading a ball in the dirt. You don't have to be fast to read a ball in the dirt and then jump right on, on the get. But this is what happens to you guys and a lot of my players. They're there, they're there, the ball's on the way, and okay, now they're dead. Stop. And now ball's in the dirt. Oh, okay, I'll run. It's in the flow, right? Remember, movement before action, so the ball's in. Boom. I've never stopped. I've never gone to this position. I'm already moving. And I've read it as I'm moving through my secondary lead, and then I just take off and run. All right? Contact reads. How many times have you been at third base your guy gets to third base, and then as a coach, you have to tell him what to do. <laughs> right? This is what I want you to do. If the ball's you know, hit here, this is what I do. There's three reads we have to know, right? On the ground, on the line, and in the air. So all I'm going to say is know what you're doing on the ground, on the line, and in the air. That's all I say. He can't hear me, but I just say this. Know what you're doing. Second base. On the ground. Second base, less than two outs. What are we doing on the, on the ground? If it's, if it's base side to me, second base side to me, I'm advancing. Chopper, I'm advancing. I know that. Fly ball, I'm going to assess. Line drive, I'm going back. I'm not freezing. I'm going back, less than two outs. The minute it's hit like this, I'm back. Right? Why back? Because if it's a line drive and you freeze and now it gets through, you're not going to score. So why not help yourself stay out of a double play by going back? Fly ball, where are you going to tag? If it's a blooper, I'm off the base. Right? Ball's in the air, depending upon where it is, we've got to make a read. Third base. Know what you're doing on the ground, on the line, in the air. Third base for me, two things. We can do one of two things. The easiest and most underutilized is contact. If there's ground ball contact, easy to read. Ball hits, everyone can see it going down, run. Movement before action, I don't care how you want to set it up. Here it is, throw it in. Move, move, move. ground ball contact. Or if you want to teach it a little bit different, you want to teach the walking lead, here, fine. Whatever you want to teach. But what are we looking for? Man at third base, if the ball is touched and it goes down, you run. Period. 
ground ball contact. Puts pressure on the guy at home. <clears throat> takes all the decision making out of the guy. I love it. When do I use it most? Second and third. All right. We want to we want to at least get one run this inning. All right. And we got a, a fast runner at the plate. Chopper run. I, I know it's a chopper. It's to the pitcher. Well, he's going to throw the guy out at first. And what do we have? Second and third, two outs. <clears throat> so why not run the damn guy? Because I'll tell you, they don't make great decisions. So I'm a big believer of contact plays from third. So even if the infield is in, too? Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. Second and third, here's the worst case scenario. Second and third, contact play. Base runner doesn't have to need any good instincts. He's not a good base runner because you know it because you've coached him your whole life. So it's easy for him. Ball's contacted down, you take off. Ball's on the line, you get your ass back. Line or air, you're back. But otherwise, on contact, you're going. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Chopper, right? He takes off. Guy from third takes off. Runner takes off. He feels it. Now he has to make a play at the plate. Worst case scenario, we're first and third. By the way, first and third's harder for a pitcher to deal with than second and third. At most levels. Not necessarily maybe at your level. But at most levels. Because now you got to deal with that guy over there for shit. Oh man, he might run. Who cares? But that's what he's thinking. Okay. Now I'm not telling you all the time, but when would I do it? Second and third, have a backside runner, that's a good side. Bad base runner doesn't have good instinct contact play. You might force him into some things. And you know what will happen a lot when it's hit on the ground? Balls that if he goes right away, the guy won't even try to make a play on him. Second thing from third base specifically, a read play. Now we're asking him to make a decision. And there's a number of scenarios there. Guys on third base, middle's playing double play depth, corners are playing double play depth, and we may talk about this. If it's hit to the middles, we're going on contact. All right? If you get a late jump, then you're going to at least wait till they go to start the double play. But with a, with a guy on, let's say, first and third, and a ground ball's hit to the middle, which is going around. Minimally. Okay? So we might say, if the ball's hit to the middle, we go corners. We're going to watch the throw. Pitcher, we're going to stay. Right? Whatever scenario you want to, want to teach them, you're asking him to make a decision. All right. Any questions on that? Pretty straightforward. So once again, we've talked about primary leads, getting movement before action. Right? Secondary leads. What's a secondary lead? It's what happens after the pitch is thrown. What do we try to do? We try to get space. We try to get movement before action, but we don't want to stop ourselves. So this is not a... No, we're here. Well, we're here, here. What do we want into the secondary lead? We want some movement. So that we can flow, contact and read. All right, secondary lead, you want a good way to steal? Here it is. Here's my primary lead. Secondary lead, go. Delayed steal. All right, primary lead, secondary lead, go. Delayed steal. 90% of the time it works at my level. It's not on the pitcher, it's not on the first baseman. I love a team, you play them and he delays steals, and you know what they do? They yell at the first base. Hey man, you gotta, you gotta pick that up. You gotta say something. And then after they, he says, I was here. I didn't know what he was doing. Then they yell at the dugout. Dugout, come on, you guys gotta pay attention. Right? You gotta yell something, runner. Who is the delayed steal taking advantage of? Infielders. Middle infielders. So this is how you can see. After the pitch is thrown, all right, after the pitch is thrown, what are the middles doing? No contact, the middle should be moving to, to the middle, behind the pitcher, and then back. If they're not doing that, the late steal's in order. If they don't move at all, the late steal work every time. Left-handed hitter, even more. And then you just sit there in the dugout and enjoy as their dumbass coach yells at first the first baseman, then the dugout. Because you know it ain't stolen on those. And it has nothing to do with arm strength. 
It has to do with the guys are late to cover, the catcher's not covering, the catcher's not on, on time, and everything goes good. All right? All right, so we've covered primary leads, secondary leads. We talked about uh, a, uh, a delayed steal. We've talked about uh, read plays, and we've talked about ground balls in the dirt. Question? Maybe I missed it. At what moment do you start taking your center lead? Or, or whether we're stealing, no, just just right, right. Whether we're stealing or not stealing, our move to the next part of this situation is the same. And when is it? When he goes to the play. So what does it matter if I'm stealing or not stealing? When he goes to the play, I take a secondary lead. When he goes to the play, I steal. Now, if if we're not stealing, we could maybe just be a little conservative and scale back a little bit, but once again, I'm here, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. He goes to the plate, I'm into my flow, I'm in my secondary lead. So when do we take a secondary lead? When the guy goes to the plate. When do we take a steal? When the guy goes to the plate. So whether we take a jump, if he goes to the plate, we keep going. Right, so the timing is the same. Now in your mind, you might say, okay, I'm not stealing, so I cannot, absolutely not get picked off. So I'm going to be a little conservative. So I'm going to jump. I'm going to move. I'm going to I'm going to take my secondary lead later. The reason why I was is because like recently I was told uh, that program was known by and the supervisor hits the ground. Was talking about it. They don't know the motion. It's all timing. It's, There's, I mean, it's pretty late. It's all time. Absolutely. So where, I'm going to tell you where I want to be. I can't tell you when to leave because there's so many intangibles, right? Um, probably not everybody understood the question, but I didn't get it. So. so the question was, when should I begin taking my secondary lead? So my primary lead is where I start, and then what I'm trying to do is get some movement as soon as he's going home. If I can kind of predict when he's going to go home, I'm going to get some early movement. But even if I don't do that, I want to get movement to the next base upon the, the, the delivery throw. The question is, when should I make the move to expand my lead? When should I make my move to take my secondary lead? And the answer is? When the pitcher lost the spot to pick you up. Yeah, when he starts his delivery home, when you're 100% sure, that's my timing. Now, he's saying he heard that there's a guy who lets him wait, so he, what's he doing here? What's he doing here? He's like not moving? That's that's wasted time. By that time I've already stole the base. Right? Yeah, on a steal. Yeah, on a steal. On a secondary lead, obviously you don't want to get picked off. You don't want to do this move and then you get picked off. But the minute he goes to the plate, when you know he's going to the plate, that's when I'm going to extend my lead. And if I'm doing a delayed steal, I'm taking two shuffles and I'm flowing into the steal. If I'm if I'm on a jump lead, I'm I'm uh, jumping taking a shuffle and, and reading, also trying to move. So our, our goal for us is, I think there's this misconception that we do this, and now we're going to read. The minute we stop, all right, we've limited ourselves for taking advantage of, the, of a ball hit or a ball not hit. All right, so what do we want? We want to see some flow and then here and then back. I want to get my guys moving. Ideally, they're moving as the ball's hit. That's what we're trying to get. But in a, if you did what we said, you want to get just a standard lead, traditional lead, then you're going to take, when he goes home, shuffle, shuffle, go. That's the delayed steal. Shuffle, shuffle, go. Some shuffles are quicker than others, but shuffle, shuffle, go gets you a delayed steal. First baseman can't see it because he's turning this way to see you, right? Catcher's not paying attention, middle infielder's not backing up because no one yelled anything, stolen base. Nine out of ten times. But you have to first watch the middles. Great question. But for me, those are the four things, right? Talk about primary leads specifically, um, but really what we're trying to do is get off the base and know there's two options, two-way lead. Or get off the base and know there's one option. I'm only going back to try to get a pick move. Okay. Second of all, then I want to try to get some movement before action. And that takes me into our secondary lead. 
we got to spend a lot of time on balls in the dirt. Most important part, balls in the dirt. And then finally, you need to practice on all of the contact reads. What are the contact reads? At every base, IG, you're at first. What are you doing on the ground, on the line, and in the air? So what's he got? Two checkpoints. Bozo, where's the ball? How many outs? Zero outs. What's the situation? First inning, where's the opportunity? Pitcher has a big leg, leg. he might steal me, he might run. Great, take off the lead, right? Secondary lead, ground ball. First base, it's easy, what are we doing at ground ball? We're moving hard, right? Line drive, what are we doing? A piercing line drive. When I say piercing line drive, that means a line drive, the height of the infielders. Step back. Hmm? Back. Back, right? Back. All right. Unless a hit and run, let's talk about that. Hit and run. Give him a hit and run at first base. He takes off running, piercing line drive. What does he do? Keep running. Right? Hope it gets through. Got to do it. Second base. What are we doing on the ground? Ground ball's hit to my left. I'm going to advance. Choppers, I'm going to advance. Right? I'm not going to jump too quick on a, on a ball back to the pitcher. And make sure it gets past him. On the line, where am I at? Piercing line drive, I'm back. Fly balls I'm going to read. How am I going to read it? Deep fly ball, I'm looking to tag. Flare, I'm going to extend and try to get one base. Third base, what am I doing on the ground? Coach, contact point. Contact. You're running on contact. Really? Yeah. Ground ball, contact, take off. Easy for you, isn't it? Ball goes down off the badge, you take off. As hard as you can. I'm going to gamble that the ball's not hit where it needs to be, and we're going to make some. We're going to do some good. On the line and in the air. Third base, it's easy. On the line, in the air. If it's on the ground, you go. Everything else, you're going to be conservative because you got time. If it's a piercing line drive, it's going to get through. You walk in. If it's a fly ball, how many? Man, I, this is the most frustrating thing for me at our level. He's at third base. You just said it. There's nobody out. He takes his lead, and there's a line drive, and he goes here. And you're yelling, back! And now he has to come back, and then the guy's <laughs> caught, and then he can't go. Come on. You know, third base. You run if it's a ground ball, otherwise keep your ass right here. The rest is going to be easy. Don't jump so fast. Right? How do we work those things out? BP. If you're hitting BP, have a base runner. Have him visually, mentally go through what he's got to do in each one. What are the three contacts we've got to know about? On the ground, on the line, in the air. What are the important things we need to know before we get off the base? Don't be a damn bozo the clown. Where's the ball? Right? How many outs? What's the situation? Where's the opportunity? What do you mean by opportunity? Let's talk about that. Right fielder has a shitty arm. I know it. I get a good jump off the base, ground ball's hitting the, in the hole between first and second, I'm going three. I have good flow, I have good rhythm, I'm pretty quick, I'm going to three. Right? How about a ball hitting the right center gap? Right center gap. I see it down, center fielder's going to catch it, I'm going to three. Why? Because he's going out this way and I'm running this way, he's got to come around. Right field, if it's hit out the right fielder, then i got to make a read. Last thing, and then I'll take some questions. God, this seems pretty simple. You know what I do at third base? I stand there. That's what I do. I really believe that our base runner's job is to be self-sufficient. Really. I, I expect them to be self-sufficient. Base hitter, springer, boom, hits one in the gap. Yeah. He's going first and second. It goes to the fence. He's now getting the second. And it's right there and he sees the ball. But he's going to look at me. Because he's going to tell me what I want. I know, he won. <laughs> Whose call is that? The runner. This is how you have to educate him. When they make a mistake, it's because he, he decided well before he got to second base. He was so excited, he runs first, he goes, oh yeah, I see it, it's way out there. 
I'm going three. But by the time he gets to second, it's not way out there anymore. But whose call is that? It's his call. What you need to educate him on is make sure you wait to make the call. You can always round second base and shorten it up and then come back. What you can't do is if you're at first base and you just round it, all of a sudden now decide, oh, I'm going to third. Heck yeah, I'm going to third. You know who decides when they round first base? The guy who never played, and then all of a sudden no one expects anything, and he pounds it in a gap. That dude's going three. Oh, yes, he is. But the average player has to wait a little longer. Right? But I want them to be self-sufficient. Other thing, in your drills, put a base runner at BP. He's at first base. Work on the hit and run. Another pet peeve of me. He takes off. Ball's contacted. I don't know where it is. Coach, where is it? Whose job is it to see the contact? It's the base runner's job. Now, there are some times that even good base runners don't see the ball. And at that time, if you really did your job at looking, and you just, I don't know, man, it just it didn't happen, then I'm just going to be at third. And if I'm like this, that means it's a ball up, you better get back. Otherwise, I'm just going to run it. Okay? But whose job is that? It's a base runner's job to know what they should do on a contacted, popped up, hit and run. So you work on it in BP. He takes off, he puts a swing on, that guy reads. Hold him accountable. If he makes a bad read, then you gotta explain to him why it was the wrong read. He has to see it. How does he see it? He has to look to the plate when the ball crosses the plate. That's how he has to do it. And the great base stealers do that too. You got anything to add? Yeah, we'd love to add. Let's go. Get in this. So, you know, he acts like he's just this metal coach. He doesn't know anything about baseball. Yet he spent <laughs> like 25 years in pro baseball. But A couple things. As coaches, it's our job to know the other team's arms. Right? When I get on first base as a position player, I, you know, instead of digging myself for a long time because I got my knock, I got to check the outfielders, man, see where they're playing. Right? The first time you play a team, maybe you're playing a three-game series, I don't know at your level you do that, have everybody watch infield, know who can throw, who can't throw, right? If I'm, if I'm a, a base stealer, or really I can tell a good base runner by how he sets up. And a lot of base runners will have this foot up here and this one back here, and they're always ready to go back. And now if I'm going to steal a bag, i got to take a false step to cross over, right? I can tell a good base runner you got to have a little open foot right here, right? Get your base runners to be ready to go to second base, right? I mean, yeah, you want to get back, but if I'm stealing and I'm like this, I will have to take a false step. I was not a fast guy, but I thought I was a really good base runner. You do not have to be fast to be a good base runner, but you need to work at it, right? You need to have, and like what John was saying, when, when you guys are taking batting practice, have stations of base running. It's not just hitting. You know, we would have base running stations and maybe be on second base and that day we're working on, you know, balls in the dirt. And you know what? Or, or we're, no, not balls in the dirt, but we're working on ground balls. And if the ball's hit to my left, I mean to my right, I'm not doing I'm going back a little bit, right? But if the ball's in, you make, make a jump. But if I'm a base runner, I think it was Maury Wills who told me this, I would pick out a spot about two feet out. Well, <laughs> I don't know why that went on. Right? About two feet out, and my first move, when that guy went up, I'd be like right here, and I don't like getting too low either. I want to be in an athletic position. And my first step, I would pick out like a rock out there, and I'd be boom! And you get a good jump. If I'm taking false steps, that's timing. Right? But as a base runner, it's like I said, I'm looking for the outfield. I want to know who can throw, who can't throw. Right? I don't need a, a third base coach. I don't think you should ever need a third base coach. If you know where the outfielders are, you know their arms, and like I said, you don't have to be fast to be a good base runner. Right? It's just a couple little things, but I think you nailed it, man. I mean, it's, but it's about being a good base runner. Because once you're on base, you're not a hitter anymore. You're a base runner, and, and games are won, like he said, by runs. And there's no worse feeling than having, you know, a bad base runner on base, and, and he costs you a run because you know, he was still digging himself on his head. Um, it's
for sure base running is, I think, the best way to teach it is by failures. I mean, we've talked a lot about that now, but, but that's the only way you're going to do it. So I'm a big believer of setting up games again. This is Tom. Tom wrote a book, by the way, Games That Teach Baseball. So if you're looking for it, um, it was a number one seller in Wisconsin. It's got a real creative name, Play Ball. Play Ball. <laughs> I didn't make that. But how, how, could, how could you create a game that helps you base running wise? Maybe you start a, a, a practice or a, a scrimmage always with a guy on first base. And you tell him you got th three pitches. One of the pitches is going to be a ball in the dirt. All right? That's one of my games. There you go. So the blocker has to block. That's, that's, a, that's a for instance, right? Or he starts always at second base. All right? He's trying to do something. He's reading something. So there, there's a lot of ways you could do it. Or how about just how far you could get off. The pitcher's got to pick, but he can't pick more than three times. We're trying to steal off the catcher. There's this uh, real cool thing I, I, we use now. Um, it's called a uh, bullpen bat. It's a short metal bat. It stops right here at your arm. And it has a clicker in it. Have you guys seen that one? So it's, it looks like a mushroom. And it has a handle. It looks like a mushroom. It's, it's made by um, mule, mule pups, mule sports, something like that. So what it is is if, if you go through the full swing motion, it'll click on time. And of course you want to hear that click out front. We learned that, right? Mm -hmm. If you check your swing, right, then, then, it's no, then it's a non-swing. You won't hear any click, okay? So the guy's at first home plate, there's base runners, all right? His job is to put an on-time swing on during a strike. If it's a ball, he takes it. No click. If it's, if it's a strike, he's putting a click on-time swing on, so the guy at the plate's working on plate discipline. The guy at first base trying to trying to run. The catcher knows there's a guy in the box, so you know he can't. He's got to work around him. And what we haven't talked at all. They just know what they're trying to do. Here's this device. Go do it. I think it's called Mule House or Mule Mule M U H L. I think or maybe that's how you spell it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just curious with your with your college guys. I, like uh, roughly how many position players do you have? Uh, on the roster, about 22. <coughs> so, uh, how much time do you spend on more kind of nuanced things? For example, um, at teaching them when is a good time to take more risk or less risk. Uh, you know, number three, uh, number three, our best hitters up. Uh, you're on second base, pass ball, uh, or, so, or you know, not far from the yep. plate, or runner on third, number yep. nine hitter up. Yep. Now's maybe a right. good time to so, take a crack So this is how we do it, this, and this is only how we do it. I still give a sign for everything, but I have a green light sign on the bases. Okay, so if, if you're one of those guys who has a green light on the bases, you won't have a green light your whole life. You'll have a green light at a certain period of the game. Okay. All right, so I'll give them a green light, that means that's you. Sometimes I gotta have a conversation with that guy. I gave a guy a green light, lefty hitter up, he's at second base. All right. Um, he had a green light starting at first. He stole second. I didn't take the green light off because I didn't think I needed to. But anyway, he's at second base, left-handed hitter, and the guy throws a fastball outside. He takes off stealing. He gets thrown out at third with like nobody out. What the hell are you doing? Right. So you might have that conversation with him. But as far as I'm concerned, you give the guys that are good base runners a green light. You let them go to work. If they do do something really ridiculous, you have to have a conversation. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. And the rest of the guys are still on the sign. All right? However, ball in the dirt does not require a sign. Right? Ball in the dirt does not require a sign. Understanding contact doesn't require a sign. It requires anticipation. So that's a great question. But once again, maybe what you do early when you guys are scrimmaging, you know, I, I, th I think the game of baseball would be better if we just went with five players. Youth baseball. Don't have nine. It should be a five-on-five -five game. Only infielders. Because this is what I learned at the young age. If they're seven or eight, the outfielders ain't paying attention anyway. You know who's running out to get that damn ball? It's the shortstop. <laughs> so why do you even put them out there? So you can create that stuff in your own, own deal, right? Let's play just infield. Let's go hit. Unless you, all you can do is you can always do what we call as the, the tactical baseball or small ball, right? You can hit run, you can steal, you can bunt. Let's go. 
Guys, this whole game for me is, is, is it's about instincts. It's about being instinctive. So when you when you guys are doing your drills and say you got batting practice going on or, or no no batting practice, you're just working on base running, and we have one base runner out there. Tell your players, man, to do it in your mind. The mind doesn't know the body's not doing it. Just because you're not out there actually doing it, visualize yourself out there running the bases. Or, or have two guys, have one guy here and one guy behind them, and have both guys do it. So now you're getting a little extra work instead of one guy doing it, you're going to have two doing it. But if, even if I'm not doing it, if I'm in line waiting for my turn, in my mind, I'm like reading it in my mind, doing it without doing it. Here's a way you can do it. You put three bases at first, one pitcher. Front guy's live, the other two guys are sliding in the base. So you got three guys at first, stealing base, pitcher's working, catcher's working, hit her with the short bat. Now we got a game, right? The, the other two guys at first aren't really in the play, but they are in the play because you're right behind me and you're running with me. All right? So they're getting jumps, they're getting leads, they're seeing the game. But we're playing live on this guy. So that, that would be a way to do exactly what you said. When you get to the higher levels, and I'm telling you right now, you better know if that catcher will throw. Because you take a good secondary lead, and all of a sudden you're leaning too much, and boom, you get back pick. Yeah. Who did the back pick in the World Series? Uh, it's the Houston Cubs. Series. Cubs. No, it's this year. Too. This year. Oh, yeah. It comes this uh, year, a guy in the first or the whatever, first or second game. Picked two guys yeah. Yeah. We're going to, John, great job. Good, thanks. Thank you.